On October 16th, 2020, a French middle school teacher was murdered and beheaded by a Muslim refugee for showing students cartoons of the most obvious false prophet in history in a class on freedom of expression. The jihadi, named Abdullah Anzarov, was shot like a rabid dog by police following the attack. Even though Anzarov's family had moved to France when he was only six years old, his rotting terrorist corpse was returned to his family's village in Chechnya. There he was buried in a vat of pig intestines because the villagers wanted to show the world that they do not condone terrorist attacks over cartoons. Oh, did I say that Anzarov was buried in a vat of pig intestines? I must have read that wrong. He wasn't buried in pig guts. He was given a hero's funeral, hailed as the Lion of Islam, and paraded through the streets to shouts of Allahu Akbar. The New York Post reports, An 18-year-old man who was killed by police after beheading a teacher in Paris has received a hero's funeral attended by hundreds of people in his native Chechnya, according to reports. Abdullah Anzarov decapitated Samuel Paty, 47, in the Paris suburb of conflans saint orenin in October after the teacher showed his students cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad as a way of demonstrating freedom of speech in a class discussion. As always, it's good to be reminded that Muhammad was a prophet. The cartoons ran in the satirical weekly Charlie Hebdo in September to mark the start of a trial in the 2015 attack on the magazine's staff by gunmen. Amateur footage distributed by the Telegram messaging platform showed dozens of men wearing heavy coats walking through snow Sunday, chanting and carrying a body shrouded in green cloth. Three short videos from the procession were uploaded to a Russian-language social network group called Islam is the Religion of God, The Guardian reported. Security personnel closed the village except to local residents, while more than 60 law enforcement officers were on duty at the funeral, which was attended by friends and relatives, the outlet reported. There are still traffic jams in neighboring villages because of the large number of people who want to attend the funeral, a telegram channel said late Sunday. Here in the West, politicians, journalists, educators, and entertainers recite the same mantra after every terrorist attack. It's only a tiny minority of extremists who support these attacks. Meanwhile, the funeral of a terrorist causes traffic jams because so many people want to attend and shout Allahu Akbar. But keep reciting the mantra. I'm sure it will eventually melt some jihadi hearts. He is a hero for the whole Islamic world, the head of the Shalazi administration was quoted as saying. It was a normal funeral. I was certainly there and expressed my condolences to his relatives. That is my duty. While Petit's murder shocked France, prominent voices in Chechnya, including strongman Ramzan Kadyrov, have cast blame on the country's secularism and President Emmanuel Macron for allowing images of Muhammad as provocations and attacks on the faith, The Guardian reported. Kadyrov has condemned Petit's murder, but has been more forceful in warning Western leaders about the dangers of antagonizing Muslims and forcing people to commit crimes, the outlet reported. How many times have we heard this one? We condemn terrorist attacks, but if you upset us in any way, you're forcing us to terrorize you. The Daily Mail adds, a street was unofficially named after the teenage terrorist, said reports. Video of the mourners praying as they walked with Anzarov's body was shared on a number of platforms. One carried a message lauding him as the Lion of Islam. A message with the video read, 
the Lion of Islam has arrived to native soil today and returned to the soil. No one but Allah has strength and power. Ten people in France have been arrested in connection with Anzarov's attack, including multiple students. The Sun provides some interesting background on the murder of Samuel Paty. The killing followed an online campaign from Muslim parents angry at him for showing cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad to students. The teacher had used the cartoons from the magazine Charlie Hebdo as part of a class on the importance of free speech. Reports said he had asked Muslim students to leave the classroom before he displayed the cartoons in an attempt to avoid causing offense. So, Pati wanted to show the cartoons to students as part of a discussion on freedom of speech, but just to be safe, he asked Muslim students to leave the classroom in order to avoid offending them. That didn't work out very well. Last month, three pupils were charged with identifying Pati to Anzarov before the beheading. Another was charged with lying, saying she had been present when he showed the cartoons. The Chechen allegedly told pupils he wanted to humiliate and strike Pati over the cartoons seen as offensive by Muslims. Notice, Pati asked Muslim students to leave the classroom when he showed the Muhammad cartoons, but at least one Muslim student lied and said that he had shown the cartoons to her. Looks like she wanted to enrage the Muslim community. The beheading of Samuel Pati wasn't the work of a lone jihadi with mental problems. It was a communal effort. Students and parents enraged the community, then pointed a Muslim teenager in the direction of the teacher. The dead jihadi is now a hero in the Chechen Republic, and his story will be told to future generations of Muslim youths to encourage them to follow in his footsteps. Keep in mind that if this concerns you in any way, you must be a racist, Islamophobic, hate-mongering bigot, because only a racist, Islamophobic, hate-mongering bigot would be concerned about a teenage terrorist who beheaded a teacher over some cartoons being idolized and lionized by the next generation of jihadis.